You have no idea how exciting it is for us to be able to connect with you through this uh, platform. So I hope uh, you will benefit in one way or another. I hope you'll grow. I hope you'll hear God speak to you. So first up, we want to open up with the heart of prayer and then invite uh, the worship team to lead us in a song or two. And I hope you get a chance to sing or belt out a tune to the Lord in joy and gladness. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for everyone who's watching with us at this particular time. As we come getting ready to hear from you, to worship, and even make uh, an offering, present an offering to you, bless us as we go forward in Jesus' name. So Pastor Benjamin, take us away. Hey! Come on, put those hands together wherever you are. Woo! Celebrate this name.
Okay, so now we have come to a time where we um, give of our offerings to the Lord. And I want to guide our thoughts to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 8. And I'm going to read uh, from verse 1 up to 4. Something very interesting here. Uh, and it says, And now, brothers and sisters, we want you to know more about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. Giving is a grace. Not everybody has it. So let's ask God to give us the grace of giving. But listen, he continues to say, in the midst of their very severe trial, their overflowing joy and extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. These guys were going through so much, so much that they would have thought about themselves. But in that time, they chose to have joy that because joy is not circumstantial. Joy does not depend on what you're going through. So I just want to challenge you. I know even right now you could be going through stuff, but it is not an excuse not to give. If God gives you the grace to give, in joy you can still be able to do so. So then he continues to say, For I testify that they gave as much as they were able to give. Giving is about what you're able to give. I mean, and he continues to say, and even beyond their ability. Can you imagine? They, even in th that particular time, through their trials and their uh, poverty, they gave beyond their means. Not only that, the Bible says something interesting in verse 4. Entirely on their own, they urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing. So as you give today, imagine that there were people who went through so much, but they pleaded for an opportunity to give the little they had out of joy because they saw it as an opportunity to minister to the Lord. So may the Lord bless your giving today. Let me pray. Father, I do pray for everyone right now who's giving in big or small ways. We come before you because you're a God who provides. I do pray that you may help us to give. Give us the grace to give. Help us to have an urgency uh, that we may find ways without excuse to give, not just to the church, but to people who are in need around us. For it's in Jesus' mighty name we do pray. Amen. Again, um, it gives me great joy to come and uh, deliver the word of God um, to you, to share what God has put in my heart. Um, and today I just want to talk about um, change. There's somebody who wants to see a change in their lives. And probably you're the one. There's something you've been trying to change. There's a, there's a habit you've been trying to break. Um, there's, there's a way that you want to live your life. And for a long time you've not been able to do so. So today I want to read from the book of Psalm 119. And I want to give you... Um, a secret that David had that helped him maintain change. Not just change, but helped him maintain and sustain the change that he had seen in his life. And he poses a question in Psalm 119 and verse 9. And this question is, how can a young person stay on the path of purity? And then he gives us the answer. He says, by living according to your word. And then in verse 10 he says, I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. And then in verse, verse 11, he says another thing that we can learn today. He says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. You know, I know sometimes you're staring at um, bad habits, habits that you know are bad, habits that keep you from growing, things that keep you from developing and being the best that God has intended for you to be. And you have tried. You have tried to change, but you still find yourself not changing. Well, today I want us to start from this point. Admit that out of your own strength, you cannot change yourself. And this is the good news of the gospel. The gospel of Jesus Christ tells us that we are sinners. We are unable to change ourselves because our nature is to do wrong. That is why David says that by living according to God's word, he was able to change himself. You see, God's word is not just, it's not just literature. God's word is power. God, God's word is himself and his spirit. That's why the Bible says that his word is alive and active. God's word deposited in you is spirit. The spirit of God that is able to change your attitude. So this is how God's word changes us. When we receive and accept God's word, the Bible talks about hiding the word of God in our heart. Hiding means that, first of all, it is such a precious thing. 
your, your attitude towards God's word should be that it is as treasure that you hide, that you set aside, that you protect so that it can have benefit to you. What is God's word to you? Is it just old literature? Is it just wise sayings? Or is it God's breathed word, inspired spirit, power that is able to change you? So point number one, admit that you're not able to change yourself. But point number two, take God's word as treasure. Value it, protect it, hide it. Like David says, I, I hid the word of God in my heart that I may not sin against you. Let me tell you something about my heart and your heart. Our hearts are desperately wicked. That's what the Bible says. Helplessly, the, our hearts cannot help but do wrong, but think wrong, aspire for that which is wrong. But when we deposit the word of God in our hearts, our, uh, the word of God begins to confront the lies, the deceit, the sin, the wrong attitudes in our hearts. And as a result, we begin to see change. So this is not something you do once. It's something you do over and over and over. So I want to encourage you today as we end this devotion. I know you want to change. But the truth is you cannot change yourself. I know you want to change, and if you do so, then I want you to take God's word. David says, by living, this means that he lives his life by the word of the Lord. So I want to encourage you, accept. You cannot change yourself, but take God's word, accept it, hide it, value it, treasure it, live by it. And as the word of God enters your heart, it will find anger. And in that time, the word of God will marinate that anger and change that anger into love and forgiveness. It will find rage. It will find all these things that we do not like about ourselves. Pride and all these things. And the word of God will be able to preserve our hearts. Amen. Understand, the goal is not perfection. You and I can't ever be fully perfect. That's why we find true righteousness in Christ Jesus. But I know, that God's word will not come back void. God's word will change your heart. So if you want to see a change in your life, trust that God's word is able to change you. Apply it. And don't forget, God is full of grace and full of love. He's full of patience because he wants to see us transformed every day. God bless you. Let me pray for all of us. Heavenly Father, we want to see a change in our lives. We want to stop bad habits. We want to stop things that have been enslaving us, oh God, and nothing but your word. So Heavenly Father, today I pray for somebody who wants to change. Wherever they are, they are accepting that they are unable to change in and of themselves. And today, Lord, they are embracing a new commitment to live by your word. Father, let that word gain entrance into their hearts. May they accept it. May they not harden their hearts. And as it does enter their hearts, may it produce change that only you can bring. May God deliver us and free us from the bondage of self. In Jesus' mighty name we do pray. And everybody say amen and amen. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. We hope that uh, soon we are going to see and meet with you face to face. So please come, join us, enjoy uh, the rest of your week. God bless you. Now